yes friends good morning on this sunday morning and let's make most of it thanks to the uh, corona you know it has given us an opportunity to have the online training and virtual learning and training and meeting friends virtually and that's this is what it is and uh, it has culminated to this uh, kind of a nice uh, session on international pain management and uh, we today we're going to talk mainly about the radiology or the practical part of it or you can say you are inside my ot in other words and we are not doing much of theoretical work you know that's how it is going to be so this is we know that there is an issue now this is sciatica differential diagnosis and targeting interventions we're going to talk about the uh, three three four sessions by the way this is going to be the lower back pain then we're going to talk about the neck pain then we're going to talk about neuroplasties then we're going to talk about the spinal cord stimulators and then at the end of it we're going to talk about vertebroplasty if the time permits you know this all is there in this presentation see how much we can ground we can cover today knowing that the age is becoming a very big issue especially the older age geriatric population with the increasing uh, expectancy we are having more and more older people coming in the uh, main population group and obviously when people age they have problems they have and what is the main problem is the pain is one of the main or commonest problem they go through so we have to manage don't take it as an age issue take it as a disease issue and treat as much you can so we can maximize we want to have one life to live let's maximize let's live pain free that's the whole motto and we try to maximize the another reason why we are going through all this is the uh, ev the evolution you can say what is going on with the uh, tech revolution evolution and lifestyle disease you can say pain is mainly a lifestyle disease to uh, to begin with and it has come earlier people used to do a lot of hard work labor manual labor which has really gone out and what manual labor we are doing these days is this and you can understand it is most of on the neck back of the neck which is having a toll on it and that is what is causing problem and we know all this you see our young our kids my own sons and everybody you know almost 20 30% of the working population are doing this day in day out and it there is a fallout there has to be fallout there has to be problem coming along with this a new posture new things coming see this is the evolution what is evolution is we have become a quite from four legged to two legged now again we are getting into this kind of scenarios and this evolution because of the technology coming very very fast in one or two generations our evolution is not able to catch up that's why we are getting into all these problems of the uh, to do with the uh, table job or desk job or computer jobs you know see this is a new uh, for which has come in is the uh, mobile and then over mobile we have all this whatsapp every day it's about they say on an average 3 hours every day you're doing mobile work and obviously and we are not conscious of the fact that you are not going to keep your mobile just like this keep in front of you and do it which is the problem now when we come to the back pain what worries us you know this is the uh, herniated disc the spinal stenosis or lateral canal stenosis for the matter inflammatory spinal arthropathies the ankylosing in one of them and others are also there spinal fracture in india typically is a very very common problem vertebral fractures and instead of fractures i will say lot of people have a gross or severe osteoporosis they also have a pain coming then we have the cancer thing and then cordic one syndrome because of the uh, many reasons will they will come to that and then uh, the uh, referred pains from the viscera what are the red flags we shouldn't miss you know this is a fever weight loss we're looking for either tuberculosis or infection or maybe a cancer sometime intractable pain not improving more than 4 to 6 with all conservative management this is the time you should go for a higher modality of uh, intervention see a pain specialist or a spine surgeon for that matter nocturnal pain or increasing pain in severity no, don't neglect it this can be very nasty people come a little late in that case either in maybe tuberculosis or ca don't make it too late and then you have a morning stiffness obviously we're talking about spinal arthropathies or arthritis or matter and neurological deficits if at all some people have it this is a very bad thing to happen because then becomes the recovery becomes very poor and late yes you can manage with the medicines as much you can but people should not do a home medication or self medication that's the worst thing they 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 do with themselves and which is bad and there are lot of medication issues are there because nephropathies i've seen higher of the dialysis units are full with the uh, analgesic nephropathies and with the increasing diabetic population all the more reason that we should not take chances with your kidneys now this is where we say the earlier surgery used to be the mainstay now spinal injections or interventions have become a one of the important treatment a step before uh, we we do all the higher procedures and i would say instead of again step up i would say step down higher procedures are kind of you know step down not step up it's it's a it's going down the scale as far as procedures are concerned what all interventions i'm going to talk today is the epidural steroid injection all kind of uh, epidurals at the epidural gram epidural lysis we're going to talk neuroplasties and all 
no root sleep injections probiotic discographies to some extent ozone or other uh, discolysis decompression dental procedures i am going to talk about endos dissect means disaffects and other uh, procedures the nucleoplasty is one of the other kind transplant your cordial neuroplasty is and i have a balloon neuroplasty man we going to talk about facet joint si very very important thing denervation we going to talk about in advanced procedure we have a good amount of slides on body plastic and cavoplasty very very good slides we will see if we can cover today or maybe another day rf denervations uh, we going to talk sympathetic means to some extent pumps implants neuromodulations for the matter botox and i told you about we going to talk about the uh, endoscopic dissect means and dissect procedures very important slide a little pick from one of my friends uh, presentation this is by the way this is a the complication triangle you see the first is the prevent the complication that's the best thing this session is to meant for that that what she was telling when i talk anything any procedure if i say epidural is when i say epidural i tell more about it's like when you want to drive a car you should know how to put a brake first before you put a speed, a speed paddle on so the whole idea is you should know where it can go wrong and how to handle it so that is normally is not taught this is something very important recognize the complication if something has gone wrong recognize it and treat it is you shouldn't leave here we have had our own share of complications and we manage them successfully that's where we are what we are now if you don't manage a complication one bad complication will kill your career so keep be clear on this and you should have courage and knowledge and skill and help at hand to manage those complications that's very very important it kill that is going to it is bound to happen it is bound to happen who says if i have not had complication that means somebody is not doing the good work on and yes you need not feel sorry if you are adequately trained if you know your skills if you know your job well you can really do a good job now let's to the main presentation this is about we keep seeing all this this is a normal disc thing and what we see is a normal uh, nucleus and the annulus which is there nice good annulus and this is the spinal cord and the roots going up and face is nice good and clean look at this this has become all kind of a blackish thing this is a degenerative disc and you see there is a small kind of uh, the nucleus trying to come out of the annulus so the inner annular disruption is going on although there is only a bulge this is a concave disc there is only a bulge you know but it will it will go further on in last few fibers are gone say so the seven fibers seven layer of fibers last few fibers and by the way the nerves are in last two three layer of fibers initially there are no nerves it's all one nature's phenomena and these these uh, when the disc comes out and then becomes a more pathological remember the disc is painful when it is internally disrupting or annular is disruption is going on there's a back pain people will have history of back pain for years together but once the uh, the disc ruptures and suddenly presses on the uh, neurostructure that it becomes a leg pain so there will be a history that i have had back pain for some months and years and suddenly this day this morning i had i bent for a uh, brushing my teeth and i have a leg pain or i lifted something i have a leg pain that means the history was so clear next is go for a investigation and go for treatment this this is how it looks like pathophysiologically speaking the annular uh, the nuclear material is uh, tearing through the annulus because the loading or degeneration or posture posture is a very very bad thing people are not talking about posture it's very very important you should talk about posture to all your patients correct the posture make a natural s shape posture in the spine don't make a c posture which normally people couch slouch you people do it avoid that or boss chair for that matter that's a bad thing and it keeps tearing through and i told you the and the uh, the nerve fibers are in the outer layer like i told you nerve fibers are, and and by the way when there's annular tear going on there's a new there's inflammation there's a new vascularization there's new nerve vein growth or irritation going on and that is what is now it can cause a back pain in its own right or it can spill onto the uh, root which is there and it is cause a leg pain now there is leg pain because of two reason one is a compressive one if it is bulge and compressing that's a mechanical uh, compression or there is a physiological uh, is a compromise because there is a leaking of the nuclear material which is very highly acidic and very irritating to the root drg and it's got a very big irritation is something like a salt or i you know spice has gone into eye and it becomes irritated even if you wash it so that's how bad it is for the root and it causes by the way sometime even when we correct the whole problem still there is a memory on the, the ventral root or drg which causes the problem we should be very aware of this fact now this is a very very important slide this is what we talk about nucleus the uh, the annulus now this is synovertebral one nerve which is recurrent now coming from the dorsal branch and it is supplying the pll and the posterior structure annulus <laughs> and it's very very sensitive for the pain that is nature's protection by the way nature wants to tell okay you are tearing open your annulus now and your nucleus will come out so stop and that's where you take rest and take treatment and become fine or physio for the matter but remember the anterior disc is mostly mostly supplied by the sympathetic fibers now this is what is called a sympathetic play is going on that's why there's a diffuse pain 
it's not a very constricted dermatomal pain diffuse pain which is there in the back sometime because it is emitted through the uh, uh, the sympathetic uh, sign that is why sometime we try to do a sympatholysis for the same reason or we do a rmi complicant is rf for the same reason yes there is a technical problem because your what your spinal artery is coming just at the same level where the rmi complicant is there so it, that becomes a little tricky so one has to be aware of this fact there when you trying to do this there is a new modality of treatment which is there when doing endoscopic dissect which we do in day in day out or and or this procedure there are people who are smart enough they are taking away the synovertebral nerve they are ablating this nerve like we do a facet nerve ablation they are doing the synovertebral nerve ablation because the pain is taken care of because it will take uh, really months uh, for uh, for annulus to heal and patient will keep complaining of the pain otherwise either you go inside you burn the annular nerves from inside with the radio frequency probes or bicuplasty or annuloplasty or you or you burn out this nerve or uh, you know kind of sacrifice this annuloplasty now and the pain is taken care of this is very very important and see the arrangement by the way when you doing interdiscal work the ventral route comes first to you always always remember people have made injuries because they didn't realize there's no pain when you uh, you know kind of uh, insert the ventral roots it's only the motor thing is there and they're checking for the sensory thing so remember sensory is only in the dorsal one ventral is got no uh, pain per se or very mild one which is not really appreciated by the patient and the doctor and they cause injuries and patient come with the limp like so this is to be understood very very important point now this is very very good slide this is what we saying is there 90% of the fibers which is coming from the uh, synovertebral nerves they are a delta and c fibers they are carrying the pain and 90% of them and, and most of them are from the anterior abdominal space posterior abdominal space doesn't have big fibers and all these fibers are focused at the uh, i told you about the uh, pll as well as the posterior annulus that's where they are all kind of localized and focused so that's the reason why people complain so much of back pain which radiologically many time we don't see many things but that is what it is this is what i was talking about the uh, rmi complicant is rf you don't have to go much further on because then your sympathetic symphysis happens and you don't have to be receded here your bare tip is here and you're burning the nerve in there next to the body and you don't come out because they are uh, the, the segmental uh, uh, nerve is going to go from here and that is that should not be burned you know that have you have to be careful always do a stim as and when you do a neurolysis any procedure always do a check and be it stimulation for sensory motor and then proceed further this is a very very important lead because sometime when you're going to do a work in here you might uh, meet with the genitofemoral nerve you don't want that to happen or you meet with the uh, main nerve from l1 s2 or l3 and you don't want to burn them up you know, that's the reason that's what i was trying to say this is you can call it a crps is lower back sometime there's a back pain which has to be taken care of you do a sympatholysis in there and this is one of the way you see the very good appearance of the uh, retroperitoneal space it is just like an abdominal space and you do a little of uh, spread there best is the l2 because your nerve is entered through l2 the most of the fibers are carried through l2 or you can go to the specific branch and can do at the level also now about the radiological part of the disc procedures when we are trying to enter into the l5 s1 you try to go by side of the sap super radical process remember very very important go the side side the side of sap that is that is in line with the disc space go by the side we'll we'll discuss it again a little later Try, and and when you doing all discography procedure or debulking or methylene blue or ozone uh, then you try to be in the center of the disc and put your chemical there or your drug or anything there but when you want to do something to debulking now close this you can debulk in the center of the disc you take one take some nucleus out but if you want to do a this annular work or disc disruption work or pivd work you will have to come at the posterior one fourth of the uh, disc in the in the lateral view and that is the whole work is has to happen here nothing nothing in the center of the anterior two third no way because you want to have that sporting structure there so you don't want to handle that structure because after all body needs something to support itself so you don't otherwise what happens is you do lot of work in there there will be disc collapse syndrome and there will be facial arthropathy more of facial loading and more of facial pain and that is no good and by the way when this collapse is the foramen also become narrow and patient start having a secondary foramen narrowing and later canal narrowing and the consequence problem coming up so understand this is the lateral view this is the ap view and in, when you doing endo procedure in the ap view you may be uh, coming right up to the other side of it but in the lateral view you are just staying there as i mentioned you earlier we'll come to that again this is what is discography sometime you have to do this procedure because the one which is on mri is not the disease or the painful disc sometime so you might do need to do a discography if you are in any doubt do it do it be sure 
and this becomes all the more important when they want to do a bigger open surgery and we can always do it during uh, our endo procedure we have to put in your first needle you can always put in a die and you do a discography on table for that matter and proceed further yes some people have started doing a treatment on this part i'll just explain you there this is by the way empty disc syndrome one of those beautiful slide of 2009 patient had a whole disc which is extruded outside or sequestrated for that matter and i know how he became fine he is absolutely fine i saw him few years later is absolutely fine you see there is no uh, material inside the disc and you seeing in this the prone position so dependent portion is with the die and other portion with the air this is called empty disc syndrome just one of the interesting slide i thought i'll show you now this is important when you do a discography alone discography is not going to be enough until unless you do a ct the post discogram ct that gives you the best information about the disc integrity from the in inner side you know otherwise mri is very good for external disc in, uh, integrity part but internal disc integrity internal disc disruptions that all can be best seen in the ct discogram and you have to manage these kind of problems because they are giving pain back pain to the patient until unless it is come out you might have to manage this with one or the other debulking procedure but here you just have to do aneuploplasty or nucleoplasty for the matter and your job is done that is how it is best done this is a great scale grades you know dallas grades 1 2 they don't give much of a pain as soon as getting to the peripheral fibers they start getting pain do aneuploplasty there which goes further there's a radial tears now going on and you have to manage it i want to educate you on one thing that many time there will be multiple of these coming up not just one of that when we doing endo disc procedure we see a one bit disc fragment coming out we just take that down and forget the small ones which is coming up which are the disc disruptions in making so you have to manage like a hernia you take the main hernia from ventral hernia in the body abdomen you can call it when then you have multiple small small hernias which are in making you treat all of them and do the needful lately what i'm doing is i'm doing a little of mesh aneuploplasty Uh, this is a new thing which I have started doing. So I I close all those holes which are potentially can be a problem in the future. One of the slides from one of my friend, and this is the spinal pain pathology. Extra spinal, it can be ligaments, facets, muscle. We have to treat. They all are treatable for the matter. Very easy. You do a prolo and other treatment, physio and other things, and trigger point injections or Botox or uh, or maybe steroids or PRP or prolo. And facet obviously we are going to talk about RF and prolo also. this is discogenic pain then a disc leak chemical irritation of the nerves which is which is happening and that is irritating i told you earlier disc hernia pressing on the nerve per se that's a very big thing and that needs an urgency that's an urgency scenario you have to manage although i've seen this uh, absorption or resolution spontaneously also so you have to calculate which patient needs procedure and which patient can be managed conservatively and this is the intraspinal the the nerve mechanical compression on maybe because of the reason of disc per se disc bulges or fibrosis from the previous thing or natural fibrosis or facial cyst and other thing which is there or some lesion otherwise or the nerve root uh, chemical irritation coming from the disc you know look at this this is not one of those thing it happens day in day out in our mri i think look at the mri disc collapse there and there is a bulge of the disc the annulus is bulged out the uh, there is a hypertrophy of the ligament of flamum as well as the capsule facet there is arthropathic arthropathy is there and and the, look at the poor root this is all compressed now by the way remember this is the root and this is the vessel per se next to the root or maybe the, there may be vessel may be here this is the dorsal and ventral roots you know ventral root and dorsal root and this may be uh, by the vessel around this is very important to understand there is a vessel always a vessel there we'll come to that again because when doing a root block is very important to be conscious of this vessel now about the modic changes this can be painful for the patient per se and we have to kind of manage the disc per se Uh, for the modic changes some people have started putting little steroid if it is early disc disease but i am little fearful of putting steroid because of infection reasons type 1 is with its fluid like look type 2 is with its fat like look and type 3 is with its closest look depending on how uh, chronic is the uh, modic changes or how bad is the modic changes this is very important this has not been talked this is one of the endoscopic work you know when doing transmural endoscopy very important very very important slide because many time there are so many pain reasons at the small area which is cannot be addressed from the posteriorly that is the whole point this is a hidden zone of macnab which is there and maybe inflamed is maybe hypertrophied sap maybe capsule tight capsule maybe some ligaments or maybe some fibrosis or inflammation of the root and there's so much going on in here and this area has to be well looked now we can go from the side we call it a sagittal surgery from the side and we we are not doing a coronal work coming from the posteriorly so this is interlaminar surgery is coronal surgery and the endoscopic uh, uh, transmural surgery is a sagittal surgery and this is giving a very very good results so one if one has to be well versed with all these modalities of treatment 
Now, I, I don't think anybody would ever advocate a surgery for this disc. But yes, it is painful. Yes, it is degenerated. Yes, it is black disc. Yes, there is a small annular disruption in some HIZ. It needs some treatment. So, there are different modalities of treatment. We will come to that again. Now, this era of least invasiveness. As far as we can, we can be least invasively. One important thing we have to understand. When I go from here, when closer to the body, this is midline. Closer to the midline, more anteriorly I go. More on the same side I go. When I go away from the body, when I distance myself away, I this SAP being pivot, always remember. This you are acting against the pivot. Farther you go, posteriorly you come. So when you have a central disc work, you can come little about 45 degree. When you have a posterior disc work, there is disruption, there is a bulge in here. You go a little further off on the skin and we come in here posteriorly. And sometimes, by the way, there is a lot of uh, big fragment in there. So you might have to come epidurally. So the people have started doing far lateral or epidural surgeries. That is outside in approach. That is many, many people are doing it and they are very happy about it. They say, why should we go inside the disc when the whole problem is lying outside? But the other people will say, but it, the problem has come from inside. So, we, we, whether you want to uh, handle the terrace in your own territory or you want to go inside the other zone and uh, handle the terrace, that is what is to be seen. So, this is what you have to un understand what is the best way. It, it is from case to case basis. That is very important. Spinal injections are the newer thing which is there. It has come before other works. Uh, endoscopy, MIS and open surgery. It has proven itself over a period of time. Now, this I was talking about. When there is a disc problem, what all we can do with the disc? If we can do a thermal treatment like intradiscal RF bicoplasty or RF annuloplasty. <laughs> we'll detail all this. Mechanical decompression, we're going to do a laser work. I've got a laser machine on myself. One of the uh, few people in the world who has got a laser machine by themselves, not by the hospital. It's my own laser machine. The cobulation, very, very good uh, tool. Decompressor, mechanical decompressor, hydrocesion or other uh, nucleotomes are there. DisFX is good procedure to begin with. I want people to graduate over a period of time to a higher procedure endoscopy disectomy, starting from the easy work, you know, and keep, uh, you know, kind of expertizing yourself, have confidence and go for higher work. Then DisFX and next, this is about 3 mm uh, tube, you do the work and then you go on to endoscopy disectomy, which is the uh, mainstay these days. Chemical decompression, yes, early disc disease, you should, you should, you should try. Chimopapin was very good, but it went off of the shelf because of the commercial reasons. And big companies have killed carbon pepin. It's trying to come back again. Ozone is yes, we did ozone for a few years to begin with. I still doing it sometime. It is a mummifying of the disc, but we have to be careful. Where is the right patient? We have to do it. And then we have a methylene blue which is coming in the China, and people are doing it. This is about the radiology. This is what we are trying to see. Scotty dog, typical Scotty dog. I'm going to detail this. This is the eye of the Scotty dog, which is good for the vertiplasty, which is the pedicle. We upper outer quadrant we start here and we go inside the, the into into the bone without going through the medial border or without breaching the medial border of the pedicle very very important we'll discuss in the vertiplasty and when we're going at the rf we're going to doing rf at the junction of the sap and the uh, tp this is the where we are doing, going to do rf rf of the facet rf denervation when doing a facet intra-article injection we're going to come right in here you see very good nice intra-article injection you never you don't always have to be right there in the center of the joint no you can just sit at the lower base of the joint, lower base of the joint and you put your drug in there. Why you want to injure the cartilage of the joint? You can do it there. And lately speaking, not many people are advocating intra-articular injection. They say put periarticular. Don't put cartilage steroid inside the joint. It is damaging to the joint. Periarticular injection, which is there, if it is inflammatory one. If it is degenerative, people are advocating go for the facet nerve uh, block or uh, if it is diagnostically positive, go for a facet nerve RF, which is the right treatment actually. We will discuss detail RF a little later. And this was the interlaminar window for epidural and the across the thing people are doing interlaminar work. They are going from here to the other side and you will see that thing coming up. I do bellumin neuroplasties. I will explain that. And for all interdiscal procedure, this is the place. This is the place you see next to the SAP. Go inside the disc. And how far you want to go inside the disc, how posterior you want to go inside the disc will depend what angle you made. You more you more you kind of go away from this. And, and more the uh, SAPs of, on the posterior. This is what we call it. This is the upper end plate of the uh, vertebra. And if it is 30%, uh, you're going to go about 30 degree. If you go to at middle of it, you're going to go about 45 degree. If you're going to go further on, it is going a little back in the SAP. Then you're going to go posteriorly in the disc. That's what it is. We may be in about 10, 20 degree from the skin. And that's what you intend for the endo procedure or analog procedure. You're not seeing the L5, S1 this space in here we'll see that later but you're seeing already s1 
root space we'll we'll come to that again and that is what it is when you want to go inside you distance yourself if you can't make a full angle you distance yourself because if when you're trying to make full angle sometimes see i'm don't allow a uh, good angle beyond 20 degree or 30 degree you might have to distance or you do the line diagram which you do for endoscopy dissect me or you go by the uh, eyeballing you know you understand how far i have to go and then go inside avoid ileic crest there is ileic crest syndrome many people have gone and uh, for endo procedure and they have injured the uh, nerves or the sheath there or there are uh, superior cranial nerves and which causes problem we'll discuss that a little later okay and that is what i was trying to say for l5 s1 this is bermuda triangle this is the uh, you see the sap ileic crest is coming in the way so you have to go a cephalic tilt for the uh, cm and then you have to right angle where you can have a bermuda triangle for interdiscal approach for your uh, nerve you can do a block in here but it's not advocated to do a block at sub particular which people used to do it we are trying to do most of work in the cambens triangle for obvious reasons because the problem is in the cambens not there so please understand we'll come to that again this is the ozone work we used to do and we are still doing it some people are still doing it and you should start with this to begin with and then go for the for the procedure and this is what is ozone is looks like when you inside the disc it's all white disc you know that must be empty and bad disc and this is what is uh, the ozone spreads by the way go inside put a ml 8 ml ozone inside come out and put 4 ml ozone in the periradicular area that is what has been taught and is about 30 mac per uh, ml you know of oxygen and that is what ozone was you started and people are still doing in italy and all they are still doing it and then we we go further and now we are doing it. now what we do is we do ozone inside sometime put in ozone air i sometime what is when it come out i put a my steroid injection so i do interdiscal ozone extra discal i put my root block like lateral this is block for the steroids and this gives a good response in combo this is very good thing which is coming and this is the thing of the future please understand learn it now know it now this interdiscal biologics people are really going in a right way like a discography put your needle inside and you have so many biological solutions coming in like interdiscal intraarticular or transmembrane steroids and other thing people are putting biologics there with good results because there are papers already there about this biology papers and this is for uh, bmac we going in the ileic crest we are right there is easy procedure i know why people worry worry so much about it and it's just in there but you should know you should know whole thing it becomes easy once you know it for flying a plane by pilot is easy for you is almost impossible so that's more important this is about the bmac thing and we go inside take a solution out from adipose tissue and all make uh, stem cells know it start doing it prp definitely is on that's a beginning step this next step for many times you might need it there was a very good paper the interdiscal rege regeneration uh, using prp containing bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cell mscs a uh, this investigation and they found the com combinations gives a better result than the prp alone and that was the paper was and it is very good our one of our master has uh, shown this slide and this is what they are saying the medication usage reduces the functionality improves and that's more important what ultimately you looking from biologics they say regenerate the future not only patient future your future also learn it do it well now this is about the disruption annular dis disruption annular fissure they not always happen from the outside they happens from inside also so one has to understand when it happening from inside you capture it and seal it and uh, kind of you uh, denerve it that's what you are looking at and that's what it is and that is how it has been done with the dis effects all my dis procedures i don't leave the patient alone until unless i have managed my annular work denervation and annular sealing because there is a heat sealing going on by the side of it and that that is what is bipolar rf is doing good job do with the bipolar rf don't do with anything monopolar and this is bicoplasty put two needles here right in front of the pedicle and this has to be some distance and it should be in the posterior kind of a one third and that is what it is and you're putting your heat thing through in there and there is going to be a, a bicoplasty going on in here look at this this is the bicoplasty happening and this uh, the temperature the periphery the disc is only 45 degree inside is about 55 degree it's not hotter by the way it's a cool rf and that is bicoplasty all about it is yet to prove itself it is doing a good job some people who are fine of it they are doing good job especially for annular disruptions closed disc not for open disc remember you don't want heel to spill out now this patient comes with the three disc problems which one is uh, painful we have to do is to evoke the discography and which one needs treatment accordingly we sorted out we do a chemical one or thermal one in we do a thermal one there or we do a debulking one there each patient has got a multiple of them then we have a facet and si other things so you might have to do multi procedure for the same reason 
and this is what I, we used to do in the beginning. Goes on, then graduate on this 2007. By the way, graduate on to decompressions. Uh, this is decom initially very very good tool. Know it, but don't wrap the nerve. Remember, it has to be inside the anything you do. You should be inside those two nuclear two annuluses right there inside this. Don't go uh, 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 other side because abdomen is there. Don't come out. Root is there. So one one has to understand the philosophy. All this thermal or all these mechanical decompressions. And this is what it is. And now we debulk the material out. And it's good for debulking. Anything to do debulking is good. But I would be happier if I had to do a decompression along with the annuloplasty. And this is where the Camden triangle is all about. You see the exiting nerves, you see the traversing nerve, and there's a triangle which is made. And by the way, triangle, this is not a Camden triangle only. This Campbell's cone, by the way. The Camden's cone is there. Because the triangle is not, not just one the triangle, one side is a three-dimensional thing, it's a cone. So one has to understand the cone and we put our sheath or anything instrument through the cone. Now this is what is talked Camden's triangle for ages. Uh, better we should know it as Camden's cone. We go by, by side of the SAP into the disc or for lateral lysis block or for other things. On the same slide, I want to educate on few things. This is where we want to normally we do facet joint injection. I'll be happier putting facet my facial joint injection here, putting drug in the lower recess without insulting the joint. If at all, I have to go intra-articular. Periarticular, you can do any time. You have to do RF. The RF nerve is coming here and branching here. You do a facet RF in there. I told you about interdiscal. And you people have been doing cyclic of subparticular injection of the root. But the problem is the artery is coming by the side of it. I'll show you another picture. And that is you have to be very careful. If you have to do it here, do retroneural. Always retroneural. Don't go front and touch the bone. Do a retroneural. And that is the direction. Know the direction. And we do DRG work and all. I'll show you how we do DRG work. And this is my complicant is RF and sympathetic blocks are there. And this is about the slide which it says if you have to do a little interior work, you can just exiting root work and you have to be coming closer to the uh, root there or DRG. If you have to do a traversing root problem like a paracentral disc which is traversing, issuing the traversing or canal stenosis, you have to come more posteriorly and sometimes you have to do a facetectomy by the way. For the same reason, we do a partial, partial facetectomy. It is, gives a very good result and it's all doable. It's like this. You want to go more posterior? Go further off. You see, understand this slide. You're coming closer on the skin. You go more posterior? Go further off because this is your pivot. SCP is your pivot. And that is what will decide how far you're going to go in. But remember, when you're going to go too far, you're not going to go. When you go to upper disc, you're not going to go and rupture the uh, kidneys or uh, viscera, retroperitoneum there. You have to be careful on that account. Now, this is uh, weird. This is what I was talking. This is the uh, renal thing or retroperitoneum. Understand. Practice all this in your scan rooms. Please, if you don't want any mishaps, practice this. And by the way, when I'm talking about the upper ones, upper lumbar ones, there's a wide canal there. Uh, the neuroforamen is wide, the spinal uh, dural canal is wide, the, the retroperitoneum comes. So we have to go more closer to the midline and we work in there. Once you're inside secured, then you can do anything you want, what you can want to do. This is, this is the distance part I told you. Yeah, very important slide. More posterior you are in the, you have a work in the disc. Farther you go from the skin, midline. Farther you go from the skin, midline and less angle you make. But then you have to be adequately expert and trained. What technique which I have evolved and I will explain you that later. What I will do is I try to come SAP and touch the posterior annulus there, right there. Posterior annulus. As soon as I touch the annulus, I put my sheath dilator there and kind of, you know, uh, against the pivoting against the um, SAP, I kind of made a little more angle and then enter, re-enter inside. You understand I am coming here. Now I am pivoting this here and putting the sheath, not leaving the annulus, posterior annulus. Walk on the posterior annulus and go more posteriorly or farther off and go inside. Very, very good technique. People are already doing epidural surgeries, I mentioned you openly. And this is what Corins are very big, very good at it. They made a angle scopes and they understand how we have to do it. They're going with angle scope, going inside epidurally posterior space, not touching the disc at all and doing all the work there, be it adhesions, be it the disc problem. Important slide for one reason, if there is an upper disc migration, you start from below on the skin. If there is a straight disc, you, this is what is normal reference point. You may already made a reference point, but if the disc is low migrated, accordingly migrated, you start from above because you have to want to, you want to see below. Same thing happens in the other side. Now this is what it is all about. This is the transformal epidural, uh, transformal endoscopy. This is interlamellar endoscopy. And this is contralateral transformal. What is happening is you are going all the way to the other side. 
and this continental and interlaminar many people are very good doctor came and other people came and other people are very good at interlaminar uh, cross and yes l5s1 when the highly crest there is a problem getting into the disc in right angle you can go transilier easy very good don't have to bother don't have to make different angles you know for many reasons there many reasons that you can't enter l5s1 because there is a small foramen is there there is a large facet the disc is literally placed and all those things are there or there is a large disc in there and you have to manage it it is impossible to get to the uh, disc fragment so you can go the uh, transilier this is the important this is the subannular work i told you you have to be staying uh, everything has to be done just under the annulus because your disc might be bulged this much and you are still not at the disc you know still inside the annulus subannular work don't touch a posterior two third is very very important not, not leave it alone and that is what we are trying to pull the fragment depending on where the fragment has gone out you already know from your uh, scans where the fragment has gone out and this is the iliac crest next to the iliac crest at the end of the procedure and do a disc fx uh, you have to do a bi 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 uh, bipolar rf uh, annuloplasty and annular denervation which i told you earlier also now this patient has got a large disc patient has been done laminate me by the way understand this is a post surgical syndrome should not say failed back surgery post surgical syndrome and there's a large fragment which is there see what surgeon normally sometime do is they insert touching this because right in front of the cord it is so fiery to uh, can't displace the cord coming from the posteriorly you don't see anything you just decompress and and hope that this should be good but remember there's a lateral recess patient is complaining of lateral recess pain there's a compression going on still and that is not enough good enough look at this uh, slide you you can't leave this big fragment in the canal and uh, leave it alone so you have to kind of go and decompress or a patient which got a large disc which is there you look at the very big disc fragment young patient 37 only very big leg pain already a motor symptom has started coming in you don't leave them alone you have to take the fragment out this is the insulting fragment don't leave terrorists inside to take them out and kind of uh, ablate it now this is what the red head i call it and this is a red head which is the nebulous space there is a reaction body is already trying to absorb and this body is already trying to react to this Uh, foreign fragment. It is not natural to the. By the way, remember, this is not natural to the disc space. This is not natural, and that is where there is a reaction going on. This is the mass which is there, which is causing the mass effect, and this is the uh, neck of the hernia where we, which is gone out of the disc, and this is the intradiscal portion. So you have to remove it, and here this, the, you have a radiological resolution, but it's not always there. But try to get a scan done and see how you are doing your good work on. Initially, we used to avoid, but lately I am doing MRI, post surgical MRI. really no because patient may rethrow fragment later on and we don't want to be blamed for that now this is what i was trying to say this is the um, the, the the traversing root this is the dura you are seeing you seeing some fibers of pll and you see the interdiscal space some people have started doing the uh, fibrin plug darwin plug dr gore and team is doing good job they put inside they don't want to leave the hole there open there and this causing a natural regenerative medicine very very good technique and i think it should be adapted very easy Uh, take ten ml of blood, put in a sterile tube, centrifuge about ten minutes at three thousand RPM. Leave it for another ten minutes. No uh, anticoagulant in there. There will be a uh, fibrin plug which is will be formed. Put the fibrin plug through the same sheath which you have and push it back into the uh, defect there, and it kind of seals the defect and it heals the defect also for that matter. And that is the beauty of this thing. As I told you, I've already started doing the mesh like we do a mesh hernioplasty. i am doing a disc um, hernioplasty or uh, that way mesh disc hernioplasty myself also and that is another some slide you, this is where your interdiscal portion remove the thing this is where you have cut the annulus you want it to heal back fibrin plug or mesh and then you have all this um, uh, free root which is should free floating root we we put a plug on the sheath and you see the free floating root neural structure should be free easy and you give the place space back to the neural structure because that is the native place for the neuro nerve not for the disc now yes many people post surgically they have this uh, problem they are burning the back because you have done a screw fixation but there are some issues still left it may be defaced orthopathy maybe something else one has to look for this or patient has got a bad facet in there look at this bad facet not a very big disc so uh, sometime patient doesn't want to go for surgery or surgeon doesn't want to do a surgery on such patient because the results are not very great with the bad facets around there so really one has to look for the uh, treatment modality there or for that mangle there is a mechanical stress in part of the scoliosis and you obviously there is going to be a loading on these facet joints so simple reasons and this gives a facet trap look at this 
This is the root pore root in there. The vessels I told you again. I'm just showing you the vessels. Please understand. Important slide. And this is the disc which is kind of bulge, and you have a nuclear material coming in here. Annulus getting bulge, and in, the annulus is disrupted there. And you have a facet uh, knot. We call it SAP knot. There's SAP which is gone a little up. The, if this collapses further on, and there is a capsule hypertrophy or ligament of flame hypertrophy which is causing the problem. So in totality, this facetor area is narrowed and is compromised. And that's where nerve is very, very sensitive. DRG is very, very sensitive. And there's a lot of insult going on in the, for the root. That poor root, you can't do much about it except cry. Right? This is, there are many times you have a facet syndrome or radicular pain or root pain or SI joint pain. And they look alike, you know, clinically, you know, sometimes it's so confusing. Or they may be incidentally present together, you know. So one has to really understand. If you just do this, you don't do this and it's already there. So patient will still complain of this. So both ways, you know, understand. We have to do a combo work. And this slide I sometimes put for the same reason. There's a uh, lumbar sympathectomy going on. There is an MI complicant is RF going on. And there is a sub particular root block, which is not advocated these days. We try to do a root block in the Camus triangle. And, and this is what we are doing, a RF radio frequency. This is the uh, TP and uh, we are doing the SAP junction. We're doing a, and this is the intra-articular injection or uh, that way periarticular injection. And this is a typical interlaminar epidural which is going on. So one of those slides which I teach my students sometime and understand and I give them practice to do also on dummy. This by the way dummy <laughs> or mannequin. Now look at this. If you look at any patient with a wet facet, open facet, bad. Because they have instability, they have a problem, they have a pain and addressing the disc alone will might increase the problem further on. And this is what we are going to do, intradiscal avoided, peri, peri, you can do, sorry, intra uh, articular. We do a periarticular lately, you see a bad facet now in there and we are doing a facet RF which is there, you understand the nerve and you do a nerve block for testing and then do RF, we will come to that again and uh, understand. This is the intra articular. I told you, try to do uh, the lower recess. This is the one of the previous slides. Lower recess is a large recess. You can put your drug in there, it will going to walk in. Like, it's like a like knee or shoulder. Any place you go, it will walk by itself and do intra-articular or periarticular. But lately, people have seen that the PRP works better than steroid over a period of time or long period of time. The steroid initially is good, but then it starts weaning off at about two months time. Like, and then a steroid uh, uh, goes down and patient comes back with the pain. But if you've done a PRP, patient will get a regeneration and that is that is proven to be better. So you can do a PRP and you can do intra-articular PRP. There's no problem. Intra-articular steroid is a problem. PRP, just like knee. Knee, you give steroid or PRP, PRP will be better in long term uh, scale because this regenerative medicine. Same goes here because cartilage is there obviously. And that is what is called you fertilize and let the natural thing happen. Another good slide from our friend Agnes and this is what we say when there's lower back pain, lot of lumbago going on and you have so many ligaments, so many things coming up. You have iliolumbar ligament, SST, ST ligament, second spinous sacrosacral spinous ligament, supraspinous ligament going on, the facet, the SI joint, posi capsule and the trans, the, uh, the transfer uh, thoraco uh, fascia, thoraco lumbar fascia which is there. And or I call it illicitous syndrome for reason of fascia or because of the colonial nerves walking up because the nerves are branching and walking up there. They all can be painful for one or the other reason or they all can be together. But prolo or you can always do PRP prolo you can always do and it is proven to be very very good results. Same with the cervical area when there is a whiplash injury very nasty very very nasty thing and you have the ligament injury you have the uh, joint capsule injury going on you have the disc which is there there is some amount of lysis going on and the poor road can be, can be getting compromised. This all can be best handled in one go by the PRP and they have shown this PRP has given a better result than the steroid any day. And this is a natural curve and this is in the extension and the flexion. There is a translation going on. Can you see this? When the translation more than 3.5 is disease, 2.7 we should address this and that is what they are seeing. And they say plain cervical x-ray doesn't tell you much but if you do a flexion extension view like we do in the lumbar one also for uh, instability. That gives a 99% surety of the uh, problem. And this is what they talk about all this regenerative aspect. And you are putting your drug. We are going to talk about facet RF, but this is putting drug on and around the facet capsule. That's what he has been shown in here, like this. And this is a combination. You see people are doing a superimposition these days. Technology is improving in a very big way. So what do we tell your patient, PRP patient? Any place you do PRP, any part of the body you do PRP, tennis elbow, shoulder, pronofasciitis, any place. Tell them it is over a period of time, there is going to be an increase in the pain for some time, pro-inflammatory pain 
and there will be a little on stabilization going on and the tissue healing is going on and with time it is it is a cure by the way not just managing the pain it's curing the pain so if you want to have a long term patient with the long term relief go for uh, regenerative medicine now this is a very good paper i just saw a day back ultrasound guided cervical intradiscal injection with the prp with fluoroscopic validation for the treatment of cervical discogenic pain beautiful thing beautiful work and you going inside although we are doing fluoro yes for sure but they are see the fluoro the one problem is you don't see the uh, structures on the way like vascular structures or viscera on the way but the ultrasound you seeing everything if you can put it little on ultrasound guidance and then vouch on the x ray you are safe you are secured with the from the uh, injury to the viscera and vessels and you are uh, you are very sure that you are inside the disc can put in your dye in there along with the regenerative medicine very good paper same with the si joint people are doing si or peri articular i told you si is for a lot of ligament by the way secondary joint is all to do with the ligaments put by ligaments you see there is nothing which can carry the weight from there to there it's all ligament held like ankle is all ligament held so there is when the ankle pain is there is a lot of ligament to work here so pf fluorotherapy is very very helpful people are doing a fusion this is what is happening coming already people are doing navigation techniques they are doing fusion so much going on technology is advancing learn it ultrasound ct uh, fusion and there are so many and the navigation is going on so the, this is magnetic thing and and we should learn all this so always always when i do my session i always take a class on the a uh, scan room for 2 3 hours i take them to my mri ct scan room and show all images in the 3d format and uh, you know try to educate because it's an eye opener for me and for uh, them also so this is such a beautiful thing know the technology know the images know by yourself oh yes you should have you should have a radiological friend but know by yourself and this is what is scotty dog is all about look at this scotty dog this is the transfer process this is the oblique view by the way posterior oblique view this is the ear which is the scotty dog sap and we you have to do your face dr with the eye for vertiplasty you should know this is the pedicle now for the pedicle screw fixations this is the pars for pars defect we you have to look for this and then obviously this is the sap uh, the inferior article process iap and then the interlaminar window is is coming from there and now what we are looking at now is when you going from in here you going for intradiscal approach or later recess procedure people have been doing a uh, root block here but that's not advised it is advised to do it i would never ever do it a root block there until unless i'm doing endoscopic dysplasia suppose i made a big grant in the annulus i won't go in here put in a my steroid there i like to put it there or come a level below because when i put my steroid there it is going to walk up it won't walk into the disc so that is something important i do it but not same day after one week mostly because i don't want my disc to have steroid especially after my procedure any discitis can be blamed to me only and obviously yes and this is what it is the target for l5 s1 mean trying to look at l4 5 you're going by side of sap for little less of interdiscal procedure this is your root understand your root is always hugging the pedicle remember this philosophy always hugging the pedicle it's trying to go out the pedicle is stopping it in other words and it's just trying to go in there and this is the angle of the uh, root and this is the cambius angle we talk cambius angle a lot this is the cambius angle is all about cambius cone for the matter and here is one direction one view so it's a cambius triangle in 2d view and this is uh, where we are trying to do our interdiscal work and for alpha s1 you don't see it's there but you do a cephalic tilt and you see a very big um, opening up at the l5 s1 on the cephalic tilt this is a leak crest this is, is normally a problem when you doing interdiscal approach some people are doing transiliac also and this is the s1 foramina i do a i put a needle here Uh, from s1 take there is a tweak coming and uh, doing a pain in the l5 s1 joint for l5 s1 you take three nerves a tweak upcoming tweak from the s1 the l5 per se here and l4 which is coming going to come and give a branch in there for each facet you burn two nerves level and above level and above level and above but for few uh, uh, facet you do two nerves c71 and you do as l5 s1 you do three nerves uh, one level from below also this is important slide and this is where we are going to go into the disc and uh, more posterior you want to go typically speaking more posterior you want to go in the disc uh, farther you start off simple and this is important facet anatomy you seeing everything in there and very important this is the one facet nerve which is supplying at, at level and level below the facet nerve is supplying level and below but facet joint is supplied by level and level above this is important to understand so when i have a l5 s1 facet l4 5 facet i'll do l4 and 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 the one above right so that is how it is going to be uh, the facial nerve understand the facial nerve always has to go through the membranous ligament mostly now there are some people who says no it might by bypass this 
बट इन सर्जिकल सिनेरियो दे में भी डिफरेंट और इन ए वेरी बैड फेस आर्थ्रोपैथी में बिल्कुल डिफरेंट सो दैट्स वाई यू हैव टू डू डिवाइस वे दैट यू डोंट मिस ऑन दिस नाउ मेनी पीपल मिस दिस नाउ and why many many time facial denervation fails i'll we'll we'll come to that again after a minute this is where the facial nerve is there media branch their little branch intermediate branch little branch leave them alone they are they are supplying the uh, spiny muscles erector spiny other muscles you don't want to or multi multi fidus you don't want to weaken them try to go to the media that's why i say media branch that's why always say media branch come parallel to that avoid going to the main trunk because that will burn these one also media branch is a membranous ligament and that is getting into the joint try to burn that and stay parallel as parallel as possible this is now coming as parallel if you going away for cool rf yes you can go for any angle we'll explain that but if you going for this come parallel come from below and that is what direction is now is all about coming from below going up you may do one or two lesions way back no problem but don't go further on and burn the main branches there this is to be understood and that is there the lateral view of it you see you coming from below up and just sitting right in there and foramen is open this is by the way animation kind of my pictogram to understand where the nerve lies and where you have to burn the nerve with. this is the picture never ever get into the foramen because people have done this but always you never do a rf without doing a stem sensory motor stem i've had a very senior uh, pain specialist from usa one of my relative young boy 21 year went for rf and his leg is limp now so this is where it might have spilled sometime what happens either you over sedate the patient or you give a lot of la now what is happening is if you are given 0.2 0.3 ml of la understand very important point in here you are on the facial now you put 0.5 and more your la spills onto the main root now what is happening is you done a 0.5 1 ml la your root is also numb now you doing rf you don't know you are doing rf or maybe mal positioning or needle position change or anything happened during the procedure part and you are you doing an rf here and now there is a good heat which is conducting along with the la there is la volume also on to the main root and patient can get limp there have been accidents please understand we have all seniors have gone through all those accidents we are trying to educate our friends and uh, people who are joining newbies not to let this happen this is very very demoralizing otherwise because patient is on your head yes it recovers if you are not really very bad or you are not over jealous with the nerve it recovers mostly so that's why what happens when you do facial denervation patient comes a few months to few years back again to you because nature does a repair of the nerve again back so that is to be understood now this is what we when we trying to do a little of uh, kind of enlargement of the uh, lesion now we either use a bend now i use it very very often in quite many of my procedures because i want navigability inside it walks towards the sharper edge remember all your needles which is sharper when you put nine push through any needle you start from here it will walk like this anything which is there even if you try and go straight because it is cutting on the sharp edge right? so it is go towards the sharp edge right? now same thing which make use of is we rotate around and we kind of take it to the other side so you can cover more area with the bend needle now there are some needles which are already there pre formed another thing is we use a bipolar you are seeing a bipolar people are doing bipolar work a very good job putting on the uh, ganglion and do a bipolar and burn this this is one thing One centimeter part, or they already have got a tripod like this. It gives a bigger lesion like this tripod lesion, and they have their multi-tined uh, needles are there where this needle, the tip comes out, and the, you can burn like that. Like this is the tip coming out, you burning the nerve. So these are new things which is coming. Very good. And then obviously yes, we have a cool RF already with us, and this is where the cool RF it has got a globular lesion. Number one, number two, lesion is as much ahead, as much back edge as ahead of the needle. don't you forget this because there have been injuries because of this going ahead of the lesion there if the bone is there bone can get injury if there is a root which is the uh, main nerve which is going beyond the facet which is the facet branch the main nerve you can do do the uh, ventral nerve you can really burn that part of it or dorsal nerve for the matter you have to take only the branch but in the conventional rf which we have a routine ones is a kind of a longitudinal lesion there is a less spill in front of it <coughs> except when you doing a pulse rf pulse rf is always there at the tip of the needle so you come perpendicular when doing pulse rf come perpendicular like this like this nerve and this the needle when you doing a uh, conventional rf you come parallel to the uh, nerve as far as possible you may be a little less angled you know but as far as possible so it's very very important but yes if you do coming with the cool one you have to go a little further off because you going to anyway burn the nerve off, but there may be structure which is beyond the nerve which can get burned 
So you have to be careful on this. So people have done burn, in, especially in thin patients. Evans, there have been skin burns in thin patients. When doing SI joint work, when doing intercostal, uh, people doing intercostal uh, cool RF without realizing that this can cause all this kind of problems. So you have to be careful of this. There the cryo is very good. In few places you can use cryo. It does equal effective work, although a shorter duration, but less of dyscesia and less of problem to the patient. But yes, for shorter duration, cryo is a very, very good modality that can be well used of. This is what I'm saying. I'm sometimes a combo. If I have only three needles, I have to do five, four, five level. I do conventional one also. I've got both the machines on me and the cool needles in here. You see these needles are a little thicker. And this is when doing conventional one. Understand, you can go up till here and do your burn because burn is going to be here. When you cool RF, retreat it. And because your lesion is going to be in front of this also. So otherwise, it will go further. Suppose this was cool RF. And do a burn here, it'll, this will, the lesion will go like this. So you don't want to take chances. Now this is the lysis with the PIVD. We keep seeing this. This is a very, very common entity in our clinical practice. If you have this lesion, it, it attracts you, but that this dis distracts me. So I don't want to go ahead with this if there is a, another problem going. If there is a stable lysis with the flexion extension, you can do your endoscopic work. If it is unstable, if there is a play, don't. If there is a play, let it go for implantation and fixation and other things. That is the right year's treatment for those patients. Like if there is a lysis only, but stable lysis, yes, I can do any work in there because it's stable. But if it's unstable, I told you the, the problem. The CT picks, picks it up. Sometimes you don't pick it in the routine MRI. Get a CT or get a bone scan. A, a young people, sports people, lot of many people have these injuries coming up. The all tests otherwise are negative. You get a um, uh, scan done and you pick up the hot lesion there and you know that's the problem. Always quantify grade your lysis. Grade 1 up to 25%, grade 2, grade 3 and grade 4. Anything grade 1 and above, you should be suspicious whether you should touch or not. Go for a reflection junction. Even in grade 1 for that matter. And there is a play, maximum play is, uh, you know, is going to grade 2 and beyond. Please advise to all my friends, don't touch, leave, leave them to the fixation part. This is very, very important because it's so tempting sometimes to go ahead. And we have burned our fingers, so please don't do that. Face it RF, post-surgically, you fix it. Somebody fix it <coughs> and still there is a problem. Look, there's a transient syndrome. This joint is fixed, there's a hypermobility. Now this joint is in trouble. Now they have to do a face RF for the same reason at this level. So these people keep coming to you for one or the other than even post-surgically. Or for that matter, facet is a very much known in the younger age population also. And you have to do your facet work in there. And this young boy who came with the back pain. I thought maybe it's infection. Tuberculosis being common. Or facetal pain. We saw what is the osteoidostoma. Put your needle inside. Do your RF. 100% cure. And that is what it is there. One other patient I had a cervical C2. I'll show you that later on. This is the important thing. Sunnival cyst. People come with this with the dramatic kind of a um, uh, symptom coming in and equally dramatic is the resolution. They have a sudden because facet cyst is like a ganglion of the uh, you know of the wrist. It's like a ganglion of the facetal joint and it suddenly pops in and suddenly there is acute excruciating pain leg like pain because it comes and press, presses on the nerve, one of the nerves. And, and, and once you go inside take a needle in there, you debulk it, put in a little steroid around it, that should be the good job. Sometimes I try to do either endosco epidu endos uh, this, uh, uh, like epidurally or endoscopically, like either coming from the side or people doing interlaminar. I do epiduroscopy. I have got epiduroscope. You go inside, put my laser there, just cut open through this, and that should be good. You cut, deroof the cyst, and that is it. And it's a very, very good result. Believe me. Don't leave this patient alone because they're in very, very big pain. You can do it as a palliative procedure for the timing before surgery is contemplated. But that's what normally is. You don't have to go for surgery thereafter. This is how I do it. Interlamellar epidural, go laterally, right in front of the joint. And that's where the cyst lies. I have an MRI picture on me. And I do my burst of the cyst or aspirate the cyst like a ganglion and put in your drug around the root now. You don't have to be putting inside. You can put it around. You can put inside, it'll go to the joint. No problem. And that's what it is. This is lateral and interpreptural. Very good lately evolved for the, uh, for the root block also. Instead of going from the side, many times there have been issues. So you can go from the uh, medial side and do your root block there. These are few slides further on for the same reason. This is the facet ultrasound guided. People are getting more and more onto the ultrasound. Remember, anything in the periphery ultrasound is the first modality or first choice of uh, imaging for procedure. Anything to do with the spine, mostly the first choice procedure used to be the CM or fluoroguidance. 
but it is changing lately with the good uh, advent and experience with the ultrasound images especially cervical the ultrasound is very good but in lumbar also people are trying to expertise but yes you should always have a backup of both till uh, you expertise with the ultrasound and that is how you are trying to do this is where you are trying to sit on the uh, groove there where the nerve is there when trying to put the nerve you are doing a uh, kind of a uh, transfer thing but then you put it longitudinal also when doing RF for a block it's okay you can do it here but if for RF you have to really understand you are the proximal part of the uh, thing because we put a longitudinal section you see those uh, trident and you should do the proximal part of the or cephalic part of the trident that's very very important this is here taking your needle in there at the TP junction SAP TP junction you see this aeroplane view beautiful aeroplane view and this is where you are doing intra-article injection the top of this pillar you have the intra-article injection and this where don't go too far because you have spinal canal there and this is a TP it, 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 is, it, it, it shows you have a good machine exp experience expertise it shows and you can do this you intra-article work PRP you can always do this you are not worried even if it goes uh, intra-spinal for some reason you are not worried but here yes for steroid you have to be extra cautious especially with LA particle steroid yes now you are doing intra-article injection in there there is a very good thing which has come in lately is the uh, the peripheral nerve stimulation for the uh, fistral pain or back pain they found very good study it surprised me too that you lead put a lead next to the multifidus muscle and uh, the this is the spine in there and uh, the, you do a stem and peripheral stem and the pain goes sometimes even if your lead is gone uh, the pain is pain relief is still continues for months together thereafter this is a very good thing which is the latest spine by the way peripheral uh, nerve stimulation <coughs> This picture is important for many reasons, this is rabbit view we call it or uh, the bunny view and this is where you have the vertebral body, you, this is the uh, TP process and then you have three muscles, you in the quadrus lumborum, psoas and the rectus spiny muscle. We know trifoil appearance we call it and for the psoas block we can go in there, come from the back, right there this is important. You should know these anatomy, these few things, very important. You can go do a, your lumbar shape sympathectomy here, you can come and do your uh, the super apicus plexus block or lumbar sympathetic me I told you earlier and this is how it is so these are few things which is doable and this is uh, from from Helen and this is uh, what we, we are trying to do we are doing intercostal block and then we are going to parabody block very very good block very very good block ultrasound is a very good modality for that matter and I tell you believe me many times torso pain can best be handled with the parabody block or I sometimes if it is cancer I do even epidural or intrathecal block I will show you that but for chronic pain you can just do this parabolic block it gives a good result and that is what is when you're doing intercostal you're doing your work in there in the intercostal area when you're doing your parabolic block there is a costal transverse ligament there's a triangular space which is there and you do this this is rib by the way this is a tp and rib and you have a tp and you come from here and just put your drug in there it gives a good block don't miss on these patients very very good results now this is about the bartilotti syndrome I have about 5% patients who have a Bartilotti either before or after procedure. So you, if you miss this, they have a problem. Even if you, I don't do anything, people have Bartilotti syndrome, they can be in pain. You can manage, address, very easy. Look at this, put your needle there. Look at this transition vertebra. Here, can you see this? And there's a pain coming up. Remember this slide is especially put for the simple reason. There is a root which is the L4 root which is coming and this is coming right in front of this Bartilotti area. If I put my neurotic agent, which I do sometimes put it, like phenol and all, if it spills in front, it will burn this now. So what I literally do is I put in the needle there, do a stem at the maximum stem for the sensory motor. If my roots are not getting talking, that means there is no leg symptom, I go and put in a little of phenol in there. Otherwise, just RF will be at one spot, but the joint, this pseudoarthrosis is long. This pseudoarthrosis is long pseudoarthrosis. Putting RF at one place is not going to help this joint. So I want to put in a little more of uh, neurolytic agent or you can put in a depot to begin with. LA depot on the testing side and then in the second sitting you might do a thing. But remember you don't, didn't puncture the interior to this because your root is coming. Like look at this. I am just trying to show another such patient. So this is a very very common problem which is there. So I do address these patients. Another common problem which I see with many patients is there is a, there is a kind of a rib tip syndrome. Sharp ribs. Like a sharp tooth is haunting the tongue, there is a uh, sharp shoe which is bothering the foot. Same way rib tip, now you can call it a QL syndrome, quadratus lumbar syndrome, this is a choice or sometimes the lake rest syndrome. But I have seen good number of patients, they cry out of pain when they lie in the bed and they, 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 they come crying. You put your uh, drug in there, LA plus steroid when first go, 
they are very very happy and it's a diagnostic also second go you can do a phenol here or you can do intercostal block here so doing intercostal block one or the other is in phenol or rf will do the need for so they get a very good relief uh, and like a levator scapular syndrome people have this problem so you you should know about these things and they can be very well managed knowing is more important this is what i used to do a photo guidance floating rib rib tip you seeing the final rib rib tip here rib tip take a needle to the rib tip walk off the rib you call it walk off the rib and do your la block in there la with steroid or sometime i do a low concentration phenol 3 4 5 percent phenol which is kind of prolotherapy also frankly and now this patient has got a pain below the l5 s1 area now this if there is a facial pain you have more of the pain here this pain is either l5 s1 facial or si joint pain people will come even post surgically even otherwise and this is the si joint pain the pain map and you do a radiology yes if you see this this is clearly evident if it is spinal arthropathy treat medically for sure if it is tuberculosis treat medically for sure but yes pain can well be managed with your own interventions for inflammatory steroid don't put steroid for the infective ones and this where you do a you do a two joint view you see two two joints and you just rotate it you make it a single space at the bottom of it and as you insert two joint lines you see one joint line there put your needle in there and put your drug by the way that's the synovial area and this all is a fibrous area otherwise so you always try to address from here and put your drug in there yes diagnostic steroid plus la diagnostic don't over uh, kind of uh, inflate because the rupturing joint can be more painful sometime know the volume of the joint beat face it beat finger beat any joint beat shoulder beat knee know the volume how much you it accommodates don't pressurize over pressurize don't burst the joint it can be very nasty pain otherwise understand yes some people say when you burst the joint because it is degenerated there is a spill around the joint periarticular obviously it is going to give a relief some people say don't go into articular yes they say even doing periarticular work is equally uh, effective agree that that is one of the modality of treatment depending on patient to patient and choice your person choice yes if it still comes back yes another thing is prp is uh, taken over in degenerative joint prp is better option right and then you have the uh, joint which is ultrasound guidance is coming a big way now here is the uh, big iliac crest and here this is the joint you don't want to go in there you come a little lower down in front of the s2 foramina when you go walk out the s2 foramina so what we do is we start from our go up and uh, look or you start seeing the s1 s2 so i go side of the s2 foramina and you see the joint line in there this is the iliac crest now you can walk in easily and you can do your uh, work there intraarticular work for sure you should do a rf if it is chronic if it is long term or you want a long term relief if patient keeps coming back now this is where we do an rf we used to do it conventionally one and we walk on the uh, bipolar like the palisade lesion if you don't want to put six needle you use two needle and keep walking remove this from here take this there now remove this from here take this walking palisade lesion and you can walk like leaf rock method you can burn all this by the side of the foramina or you do the r the cool r because the there's a lot of variation in the nerve uh, into the joint coming out of the foramina the depth wise and the uh, direction wise there is totally uh, kind of a astray you know where it goes anywhere so you you taking these big lesions three lesions here three lesions here two lesions here and and another one lesion at l5 another one at l4 will do the needful it takes a lot of time with the cool rf but yes you are more sure of the effect there is simplicity we used to come from here and take take it up like this goes up till here and you do a monopolar bipolar lesion <laughs> but you should be expert how to do it another important lead is many time you don't see the foramina but you always see the chinese cap sign remember there is a chinese cap sign and the foramina is just under the chinese cap there is a chinese cap there is a foramina here chinese cap there is a foramina chinese cap there is a foramina this is very important if you don't see the foramina look for the chinese cap like right in here now another thing which is coming lately is another very important and useful thing is peripheral nerve stimulation you can just take in there do your uh, stimulator inside and is just stick on to the body and it gives a take care of the pain so this is another thing and you can do a permanent if need be if this succeeds you can go for permanent this is the piriformis syndrome and uh, what we do is we uh, we just doing the piriformis work i think i'll take a break uh, after a few minutes and uh, then we people have a little of 2 3 minutes break and then we will restart this is the piriformis in here and uh, there, there's a shattering nerve pain which is coming piriform itself can be painful known entity you can test for it and you do your uh, intra piriformis steroid this or botox 
and then you come in here or PRP for the matter lately and do your uh, shutting now block. If you're good in your ultrasound, you can really see the shutting now. Longitudinal section, and you can really see the shutting now going if there's an entrapment going on in there. This is we used to do the fluoro guidance, do a uh, block, piriformis block, and along with that, potential sometime. Potential can be reason because it is giving a gluteal pain. We're talking about lower back pain. We don't know whether it is the uh, the caudal uh, area which is causing pain or the uh, potential. Know the potential nerve problem and treat it. This is spiriculonal nerve entrapment syndrome, and people don't talk about this. This is very very important slide. Now we have all these nerves coming from here. These are the dorsal branches and coming from these ones, and the, the superior, medial, and inferior cluning nerves also. And you should know about this. There sometimes is a reason for the pain. You go walk on the leg crest and do your uh, drug deposition there. It works great. And uh, some people have done an open surgery, entrapment syndrome, release entrapment, like like the radial nerve entrapment, carpal syndrome. Yes, uh, this is the uh, cochidynia, the tailbone pain. You take a needle in there and you do periarticular. First of all, do a spread of depot steroid and other things in here. But the impar block again works very good. Go inside, do a RF of the impar, do a little of phenylation or alcohol in there, and that works much longer, better than putting. So what I do is take my needle there, do impar work, come out and do my steroid work here. And if there is a coccygeal nerve issue, I take my needle in there, same needle, and do my coccygeal nerve RF in there. I'll, I'll show you in the next slide. But one important thing I want to mention, when you're going inside for the uh, potential thing, oh, sorry, the, uh, the coccygeal thing, uh, impar block, there's a large gas shadow. So please be careful. It has to be empty rectum as well as possible. Patient will come with this big shadow in there because you're risking your needle might get into the rectum and you have had it because there's a you have to come out through this uh, sacrococcygeal disc it'll get discitis and nonsense all this big nonsense comes in and then it's a very very big problem i had a patient who is the wife of a senior most neurosurgeon of the london and he she had had this kind of discitis they had to go and do the uh, disc removal remember so please understand these are known things we don't talk out of just in the air these are facts and this is the coccygeal RF, I told you. We just get next to the coccygeal nerve in there, in the coccygeal groove. Both sides do RF, very good lasting relief. Yes, I told you when you do doing all this work in there, there can be reason in the lateral uh, hip syndrome, which may be there right from the beginning or when patient lies in the bed, especially in corona times, people or patient who have been bedridden for a long time and they are sleeping on sides, they have all this uh, plantar fasciitis coming in. Put a needle in there, ultrasound guidance, do your drug deposition, works good, steroid or PRP, you have a choice in there. So I'll take a break for um, two minutes, the company people can be there and I'll take up from here because now we have a leg pain and neuroplasty coming in. This is what is the chemist angle is all about. We talked a lot about this stuff and we should know this is our mainstay when you're doing a spinal work, this is our mainstay. And this is what the DRG is, when this the root comes in here, this is what the DRG in there. And this is where we do our the safe triangle approach with the subparticular injection there. We are looking from inside, from the cut section. But there is a large area which is there and which is next to the disc where you can really chemist triangle or chemist cone where you can do your needful. And by the way, this is the more important because your disc is bothering the traversing root there or exiting root there. So once you put your drug in there, you are going to populate this both the roots. But if you put in drug in there, you are going to populate this and the root above. So that's the problem which happens many number of times. I'll explain you once more. You have to put more volumes, number one. And uh, this doesn't address the problem which is the disco radicular conflict is going on here. So this doesn't address the disco radicular conflict. So you put a small volume, constricted drug on this side only, that's okay. But if you do interlinear epidural, the drug might go more on the other side which is not the pathological one. So one has to be careful where you have to address. This is very, very important from quarter point of view. This is the formal anatomy. This is the one which is a normal root. This is the vessels around in there. And this is where the artery is exactly. Understand the artery part. Artery is here. This all is a veins by the way. The artery is here. So you are not coming in here and insulting the artery. We will come to that again. This is where there is impingement going on. You look at the two normal and compromised one. Some disc bulge, some fissure hypertrophy, some narrowing of the foramen. And this is where the poor root is getting compressed. And this is a very important slide. You are actually seeing the root coming out, making a DRG and then uh, making a root again with the ventral root also joins in and this is the uh, DRG part of it. Now why I showed you this slide because when you do a root block here either you do a subparticular there 
or you do a cambis triangle approach there this is a cambis triangle can you see nice beautiful cambis triangle here here approach here but this is shown when somebody sometime you have to do a drg work whether you do a drg medication or want to do a drg pulse rf you have to go dorsal to the drg and that is where this is this picture is for that point of view same thing showing in the mri slides subparticular the cambins cambins subparticular the cambins the one which is addressing this and the next one right there that's what more important this slide is important from point of view that your spinal arteries are coming here right there is a direct branch of the aorta understand so they bleed they bleed massively especially artery or adenovirus which is uh, their large artery if you touch it it can be very very big problem from bleed point of view and the supply after all is a cord supply and the cord arteries are end arteries remember so you have to be careful when you are going in here that's where we see when doing some work at the base of the vertebra like ramai communicantis any of small arteries are next to that this can be a little of messy scenario so you don't touch the bone stay away from the bone aspirate and see your blood is not showing up you have to be careful don't use very thick needles use thinner needles here because you don't want a thick needle injuring the small arteries and that is where ramai you coming from the underneath and doing a ramai communicantis if at all you have to do it or you are doing a walking pass you see when you come here for the lumbar sympathetomy you come by the side of this as uh, tp and come and touch the bone touch and go touch and go and sometime touch and go can uh, touch this vessel there so you have to be careful of that account <coughs> this is uh, what i was trying to show you the artery is coming by the side of the root they are coming in here by the side of the root can you see this and they are supplying can you see the vessel coming here supplying the arteries and you put any particular material in there patient has had it you have had it so you have to be careful on that account this is what we talk safe triangle i i i call it a unsafe triangle now right what is been talk safe is becoming unsafe for the same reason and this is a safer triangle in here we will will discuss because you see almost 95% or more than that the artery small artery is coming in this area upper area safe triangle area and it's only 1 2% chances when you next to the disc there is only 2% chance by the way if you look at this only 2 3% chance if you you are uh, behind the disc you are you are not going to touch the uh, artery anyway very very low chances and that is there this is what is say catastrophes they do happen they have happened that's why it is known unless you have a subsection angiography you in your eye or on your machine subsection angiography with expertise you have a subsection angiography in your eyes what happens is you put in a dye if you dye is walking laterally that means it is venous if you dye is walking medially understand that means it is artery remember always if dye is walking inwards it is an artery if dye is walking outwards is a vein you're not worried if it is going venous it happens very often not that it's not unusual seeing those venous spread right there but is arterial spread is something you should be very wary of and that shouldn't happen in here like this this is this is what you have to expertise that happens when you touch the bone if you're not touching the bone this is less likely to happen touch the bone you may meet the artery in there so stay retro neural very very important if your, your artery is coming here going inside like this if you're saying retro neural you're not uh, neither injuring the nerve nor injuring the vessel and you're doing effective work so retro neural like this like this one you're going in there retro neural your drug is going remember your drug is going to at the uh, exiting route and the route above where there's no problem the problem is here so i'm not uh, very happy because it is not addressing my problem and this is uh, uh, how we target i showed you this picture earlier how we target and i told you about the root thing and now this is another thing which i do very often cambis triangle put my drug in there addresses the root addresses the next traversing root and that's where the problem was right and sometime i do it along with the combo of the interdiscal approach i'll show you one or two slides now this is where we are trying to do a cambis approach go for l5 s1 root very often as root is involved in l5 s1 disc which is very very common uh, disc problem l45 l5 is the commonest ones and it might if it's central pass central it might address the a s1 is the end trouble not the l5 very often it happens so doing s1 block is more important than doing l5 block l5 block please understand and this is uh, doing a root block from the uh, lamina interlaminar spaces sometime you can do a very good root spread from interlaminar spaces that is what is being lately being taught and is more effective when there is a lot of facetal issue also involved because you can address facet from here you can't address facet much when you going in there and uh, this can address facet in much better much better way i showed you this slide earlier also for same reason now this is what is called neuroplasty is all about 
we go inside god will put in your die and your christmas tree comes beautiful there's a block in here you can uh, you can take your rax cathedral up in there take your cathedral up or plain cathedral up abdul cathedral up in there and do this thing remember there is a septa sometime this septa can be problematic i'll show you in one or two slides sometime like this you put enough volume of the drug at the caudal needle and your drug is going all around on the one side which is the right side and going all out through the right side you see how you can see 3 4 5 all and s1 but you don't see a speck of dye on the other side because the septa there is a membrane septa there is giving a block now you go from the other side or you puncture this side go other side or you as you see my direction is towards on the right on the on the left side look at this mid line still it, the dye is going this way so you just do this uh and and go inside and put your drug in there now you see you have populated the other side also in the meantime nagendra and nayan try to let the people join in because i'm still getting messages so what's why what's the block why are not able to join through the link look into that please okay this is the rex neuroplasty typical we go from uh, one and a one and a half inch below and half inch away and for the other opposite side contralateral side suppose a right sided problem go from the left if it's left sided problem go from the right because you want to go across so it's very very important to take the catheter in there and put in ventrolateral spaces remember ventrolateral space because that's where the whole problem is and your catheters can be bent this can be made to bend at 1 inch from the tip and you can put through some special needle which is called a coda needles and all because they doesn't injure the catheter otherwise sometimes there will be catheter shearing so you don't want that to happen people have broken the catheter inside when they go in and out so this is where it is very important and this is how we do it go inside if there is a problem in here go and address the problem yeah, because you putting a dye may not help this this root sometime right or you come directly from there or you come from the interlaminar spaces this is all you have to learn it and this is what we are trying to do you are not seeing the dye nicely you put inside and you do a breakage of adhesions you always put hyaluronidase the then put in a little of uh, la with the steroid or uh, 9% of the saline 10% of the normal line in india we don't have it so we use 3% and that is what we are trying to break away the adhesions and open up the roots yes it gives a good result believe me so people have made their future out of this procedure only neuroplasties but sometime you may say this you are doing a caudal work and you see this picture now don't go ahead i'm not happy about this because this is a ragged ntm posterior margin ntm margin and a flat posterior margin that means it's a fluid level you can call it i am in the csf this is subarachnoid what you do is you just make a ap view you see the dye is going in the mid mid line you know a focusing constant mid line is a typical myelogram you are seeing myelogram you started from here remember or another patient i'm doing interlaminar work uh, and i'm just doing epidural thing i do this uh, dye and this dye also so i would not proceed until unless i do a uh, we call it a um gravity test on this thing table tilt test or gravity test what i'll do is i put the table head down and see where this dye is going if this guy is goes up and up and up into the dorsal and the cervical curve that means i'm intrathecal and then i put the uh, head up again and see if the dye comes back i'm intrathecal if it if this dye goes up and stays there that means it may be epidural because thoracic curve is negative space negative pressure in epidural space it stays there it won't come back that is how you can differentiate then you can put your drug in there because sometime you have to break adhesions and all put your drug in there you see i showed you put a head down and it is right in the cervical cup this is a myelogram one of those patients who had a, a lumbar puncture because of the uh, uh, procedure part now they can be you can make an iron man beautiful iron man look at this a uh, fixed spine bad problem disc problem but with a bad back see this and this is where the patient had a transition syndrome and had a very big problem neither surgeon nor patient wanted another surgery for this level right there obviously when you have spine is meant to be bent if you fix it then there is going to be problem and this is what you are trying to see the failed back surgery syndrome for many reasons like post surgical causes we call it a recurrent or retained disc fragments post operative instabilities or it was there earlier we didn't recognize it dural adhesions or surgical adhesions uh, perineu perineural adhesions also a root injury obviously a direct injury with maybe a mechanical maybe a heat injury or echinoiditis may have set in or pseudo meningocele or something which may come up or csf seroma so that matter and failure to relieve the original pathology condition suppose there was originally something very big facet or sinusoidal cyst you didn't touch it obviously patient will have 
or post-operative wound risk infection. These are few reasons we people do have these problems. Uh, I just want to say whether I'm, I'm there on the screen, my friends. My video is on. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Put my video on, my friends. No, sir, it's on. It's on. So okay. you're on okay. the screen. Okay, dear. Both your presentation not seeing it. It's okay. So let's see. Now, this is about the perineural lesions we talked about. The peridural lesions we talked about. And the you see MRA trying to confirm the sensitivity is only 50%, specificity is only 70%. That is where you have to go and do your blocks and find out where exactly how much is the problem. Now, this is uh, we keep seeing post surgically. Now, this is a patient has been operated by the best institute of India by best surgeon, still patients in pain. Now, you go per sidewise and you do a kind of facet or neuroplasty or intradiscal procedure. What is required? I told you. Now, this is another patient. You look at this very big, nice, good surgery done with the lemmectomy, still patients having problem. You go and do your root block in there. You, you should never go interlaminar in these case patients. There is going to be adhesion within dura and arachnoid. And as soon as you're trying to do epidural, you are obviously into the uh, intrathecal space. So never ever go from here. Go either from space below or space below or go from the sidewise, never in the midline. Please understand people have made mistakes and they don't see the scar, don't know the history and they go inside and they're still intrathecal straight. And we're trying to do a neuroplasty like in this patient or you're trying to put your rex catheter and trying to break away the adhesions adhesions are stiff enough that they're not going allowing you letting you in that is where there's a modality which i've devised i'll show you that and this is ultrasound is helping these days for all those uh, anesthesia um, uh, cordals or otherwise the are um, uh, procedure cordal pain cordals you can always do with the uh, with this plain thing but yes fluoro you see the dye spread that's more important but if you just want to do any open setting, you can do it without floor also. This is what I do is put in a cordial uh, needle there, put in the catheter. Now I put a guide wire first. Look at this guide wire. Put a guide wire first. Let the guide wire go to the desired space. Guide wire is 0.9 mm only. Put a guide wire over the guide wire. Put in a point. Uh, this is 2 mm. The 0.9 mm guide wire, you can say 1 mm practically and 2 mm of the catheter which is, goes in and you inflate inside. And once, this is strictoplasty. You can call it a epiduroplasty or sexoplasty neuroplasty i do go by side of this natural uh, window which is given by god to us and i go in there and because my problem is here by the way so i go directly in there and this is how i do it i'm going a transformally right into the area of concern and uh, trying to break away the adhesion or make space for the nerve and i'm just doing the work in now i'm doing through s1 foramen also look at this s1 foramen you do S1 uh, work there and neuroplasty and doing a putting a balloon there. I am doing my work just behind L5 S1 disc and doing the needful there. I am though I am doing the ozone and other things. This is long back. You know, I'm, I've started changing my work uh, more on the, the more definitive procedures. But yes, to begin with, the, these are very good procedures. Yes, you look at this. You can go transformally. You can go up. You can go behind the disc. You can go below through the same uh, guide wire. You just change the guide wire direction. Put the balloon up, balloon down. You can do that or balloon behind the vertebral body very much that's where the main problem is anterior epidural space procedure or surgery i call it i have done through caudal root i can die i've done through transmural root i've done through the endoscope also i'm done i've done endoscopy and i'm not happy about few things i can put in a balloon and find out or through s1 foramen by the side of the endoscopy i show you one nice good slide if there is a migrated fragment of fragment has broken off and has gone inside like you do a cbd stone retrieval I put in my balloon in there and inflate the uh, balloon there and try to pull the fragment back towards me. And once I see the part of the fragment, I just uh, hold, catch on the fragment and take it out. So I've done it uh, sometime when there's a magnetic fragment. And this is what balloon is doing. And look at the balloon. Inflates inside through the scope, inflates, pull the fragment and take the fragment out. You can do that. This is a very, very novel technique. And I presented some of my work in the World Spine Congress in Jeju Island. This is South Korea. This is in South Korea in 16. This epidural balloon neuroplasty and formulaplasty in innovation. I presented in the World Congress too. And this, I have uh, taken this advanced to the vertiplasty, a very bad vertiplasty with the retropulsion or posterior cortex uh, dehiscence. And what I am doing is I am putting a balloon inside. What happens is when there is a bad fracture, putting balloon inside the bone also is very bad because it might retropulse the fragment further. So I hold the fragment with this balloon coming from a space or two below like this. I'm doing a, there's a fragment here. There's a distance here. I'm inflating balloon. Obviously it's going to distract further on. 
so more injury so what i do is i stabilize this fragment retropus fragment with the balloon in place and i do my intra uh, bone work there now and once i'm done with this i cement this i i deflate this and because i'm seeing it this is a visual uh, plane now if there is anything which is displacing my uh, balloon i would know there's something not good going happening here so i it, it, i kind of uh, cement this and go come back come out this is how i do it i show more of this in my vertiplasty and gaveplasty slides today or maybe another day and this is uh, what you doing called caudal neuroplasty these corins are very smart they pick the idea and they take they put balloon over the tips here balloon tip catheters or uh, these small maneuvers and they are very very smartly doing it yes you can do a pedioscopy the visual work inside like sanival says adhesions you can do this i have this and i do a pedioscope sometime this is about 2.7 mm through 3 3 mm in needle and you go inside and now until you have a laser on you it's not a big thing it's only diagnostic pedioscopy like diagnostic uh, uh, tracheal uh, view bronchoscopy if there is a something which is to be done you have a operative work on a laser is your operative work i have got a small uh, 1.2 mm 1 mm instruments also the forceps and baskets and other things we'll explain some, maybe some later on and this is i'm putting laser fiber in there this is 200 micron we have 500 micron laser fiber also going in there going through one of those things and getting into the and uh, the anterior edge and doing my work there under visualized work people have done scld procedures not i'm not very big fan of this but yes for sanival says so bring a digits you can still do it or i do it for visualization when doing intradiscal procedure and i want to see if there is a fragment is taken care of all everything is all clear so i put a scope there i say is all clear you go that's how sometime we do it i told you about sanival cyst either you do a uh, big endoscopic work there or you just come from the epidurally just uh, endoscope epiduroscopy and just cut cut the wall of it that's it and rest all is taken care of whatsoever you do what come may you should not uh, let this happen this patient had a severe canastenosis with the um, um, spastic paraplegia she is not very old lady now once the question why didn't you get a surgery done the answer was nobody was seeking guarantee for the uh, results now this is very very bad they are uh, it's a suicidal work on their part on the part of the patient family this love i i don't like this kind of love where you harming your own patients and now uh, i i i told them you have to go for open thing only there's no option left with us yes we have advanced pain therapies like neuromodulation or intrathecal drug deliveries i'll talk about neuromodulation today little about it and this is what gate control theory is when they in the train goes the road closes this is the pain road and this is the main touch and other sensation road so this is what gate control theory was all about people got a nobel prize for this it is used for back pain especially failed back or post surgical syndrome or post operative or non operative radiculopathy crps people use it peripheral vascular disease it is been used post herpetic neuralgia ischemic heart disease or uh, vascular disease peripheral vascular disease as explained or ignoraditis sometime this is where you can really make use of this is advancing this is a new technology it is going to catch is like a mobile new new mobile is going to come in something is going to happen so start getting used to this technology this is where we are trying to place our leads for upper extremity lower back pain or for lower extremity there are different lead placement positions are there and you always do a test team first and then you go for the final thing and th- this is advanced i told you for the other areas also people are starting lead positioning for shoulder for c2 area for neck for lower chest pain and the butts and the thighs and foot and hand pain and other things so you have to know the lead positionings now this is the first order neuron the root stimulation drg and the pulse and the pulse rf but the second order neuron is spinal cord stimulation and intrathecal opioid therapy and third order neuron is right inside the brain the motor cortex stimulation of the deep brain stimulation this is where people are doing lot of work at the uh, first order neuron lately peripheral stimulations as well as drg spinal cord stimulation is always there there is a very good thing which is coming is the high frequency things which is coming which is called a paresthesia free stimulation now this is initially used to be a painful or paresthesia stimulation now peripheral paresthesia free stimulation which is going on yes uh, peripheral stimulation has come in it is very very useful like if there is a dysthesic patch or hepatic patch or there is a peripheral nerve which is not getting managed like common peripheral nerve you can put all this and this you can really address and they can be very full painful shoulder you can put for the axillary nerve and the suprascapular nerve and you can do a good work in there people have done it and this is what is called hybridization you put a spinal cord stimulation and you do a drg stimulation of the specific areas which you think is not been covered by the spinal cord for some reason 
this hybridization or peripheral stimulation for the matter now initially you put a single lead for the trial thing and once your trial is working you should know where the trial is then you put your second lead in some people do a two lead trial it's okay but you can do a one lead trial and once you do a final placement position always even if you're successful is there with one lead put a two lead because you have a more variability and more durability of this thing and there can be lead uh, kind of a migration so you have two leads still in there and that is a very big help i'm showing you one of my page own patient he came from ethiopia he has got a six surgeries done from chennai from thailand from delhi and he doesn't want to go for seventh surgery and many n number of injections n number of injections uh, beyond surgeries and look at this this implant screw which is pressing on this now look at this another one which is there he used to get a very bad uh, pain twisting pain in the legs so i did a stim on this patient i wanted i wanted this screw to go away but uh, the surgeon or not nor the patient wanted another surgery so we went ahead <laughs> we did a placement of the uh, he's got two surgeries done already by the way so did a lead placement in there you look at this one laminectomy here another laminectomy here lower down two laminectomies and lead positioning there and on to the side of the uh, lead, uh, problem always try to go to the side of the problem go across so you can do a big stem and this is the posterior uh, produce space and you do a staggering you got a lead staggering what is lead staggering is you don't put them parallel you see this lead staggering you one lead is here the the, uh, the other lead is um, the contact is uh, not in the same level so it's called a staggering step pattern or staggering pattern this gives a better memorability and better uh, lead uh, kind of a Uh, stimulation because you want uh, stimulation from here to here or here to here you don't want a parallel stimulation between these two lead doesn't help much so you have a more thing this is what is uh, lead placement i told you he's got a nice big surgery here also and lem lemectomy at uh, deal 10 10 11 also it was very difficult to understand one point of view if there is a surgery here how are you going to place your lead there in the dorsal area because it doesn't allow your lead to go but still we could manage the leads there and that is and you have to avoid the lower surgery the upper surgery both and this is the lead positioning there i have devised one nice thing when i was to discharge this patient i let me put a scope in there ultrasound there and i did the ultrasound check for is any collection or not this beautiful uh, implant you see in there and the, my leads are coming from here getting attached i'm looking for any collection seromas or hematoma or anything and is lying nice quiet and uh, lovely and patient was very very happy i i couldn't recognize once he was off pain i was couldn't recognize he was in the lift same lift which i was walking now this is important slide in field back surgery and spinal cord simulations the proposed al algorithm is this a very good slide please low back pain tonic stimulation go for burst low back pain and back pain is bp back pain local the peripheral stimulations or if it's a diffuse pain you go for um, uh, 1 to 10k we call all the call it 10k stim or 1k stim and you can go for this if back pain is more than leg pain tonic double x or 1 to 10k later on and if the leg pain is more than uh, back pain then you start the tonic stimulation tonic double x go for burst go for 1 to 10k now these are few things this is very very important things which stimulation gives best for a given patient and you have to put your implant accordingly beyond the leads the leads also sometimes are specific to the implants about the drg this is a new thing new uh, kit but very very promising and you see you just go wrap the drg in then there look at this drg and this you wrap the drg in there with the lead and you make a strain loop in there so that it doesn't move much and you do a thing there are many advantages of this because the csf volume is low you can manage the low battery current and your your next to the uh, drg so the migration level is low you don't miss on the stim and you are not doing a paresthesia which is happening in the dorsal column and there is less mobility which is there so these all put together is more favored for focal pain we'll come to that again look at this drg stuff and by the way drg is the power house of the segment by the way remember this is the brain of the segment local nerve segment so so many thing is going on nociceptive center center of quarter head quarter this nociceptive head quarter you can call it and if you address this you don't have to go and do your need work there by the way so this is where uh, you can put in a few leads in few places people are done for even for uh, neuropathies for polyneuropathies also with a very very good results and this is what we used to say when you used to do the work with the spinal cord stimulation you used to have a whole leg and thing pain when the patient has a focal foot pain with the stim drg stim you can have a local foot pain that is the advantage of the drg look at this drg versus spinal cord stimulation is predictable in location it doesn't move much there's a less variation in stimulation intensity with body position because the drg doesn't move much with the uh, change in the position 
lower rate of energy consumption obviously one tenth almost or maybe more and you have a long battery that's the battery was a big problem battery was very costly so that problem is circumvented the separation between the motor and sensory fibers are there because you're sitting on dorsal so you only obviously have a sensory fiber coming that's where your concern was motor is spared and then map to specific dermatomes you can go specific dermatome check and you can be just be there leave all other which is not required the the patient selection is best is in for the hernia repair surgery post hernia pain total knee and hip replacement surgery uh, means pain for the matter post surgical pain foot and ankle surgery pain or foot pain per se or ankle pain per se which is not responding to any other treatment pelvic floor pain they found after surgery and it's they found a good result with that and lower extremity amputations or phantom pain or stump pain they found this a very very good thing in those ones as a special selection looking at this this spinal cord stimulation the failed back chronic pain and back pain crps is common for both but drg is more helpful in the patient where there is causalgia i told you those few listed things and they found it to be a very good thing 86% of the persistent pain relief and uh, reduction in the average pain is 12 months and above uh, this much per percent patient will get this much relief remember how much this is very good we say 50% patient will have 50% relief 86% patient has got 81% relief what else you look for this is a very good bargain and this is uh, crps one and causalgian lower uh, uh, extremities this is dorsal root ganglion stimulation yielded higher treatment success rate for complex regional pain syndrome and causalgia at 3 and 12 months beauty now this is say whether you want to do a dorsal root ganglionectomy or reoperation or spinal cord stimulation and they found uh, spinal cord stimulation and spinal cord stimulation over and above we have a drg which is working better than the spinal cord stimulation there are many 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 studies now for given specific pain scenarios focal pain scenarios intrathecal pumps yes i'm not going to detail this but people know it it is very good for spastic phenomena with baclofen very good for cancer pain with the morphine and clonidine neuropathic pain with clonidine and uh, ziconotide for the matter for neuropathic pain or nociceptive pain and along with the la and other drugs it is still a very very good modality less utilized but yes what i do feel sometime i put in a, those catheters intrathecal or epidural and tunnel them and put it into the external flexometric pumps or uh, pumps there which can work for few months believe me and you don't have to really change the catheter if you done this work well and seal them well they rarely get infected with the good work done it is it is not that's not the case look this is uh, fluoroscopic guided cervical procedures um this is another uh, mainstay we are going ahead into a new domain and it's all to do with cervical procedures uh we have some time you want to take up questions or you want to take up the cervical procedures my friends so this is uh, one of the sessions which we do and the, i say the best way to define your future is to design it and let's design it designers way you know that's what it is this is one of the workshop scenarios you know where uh, people are here my friend dr shantanu is here right here and other friends would be around ashish i will look for your photos also and this is it and this is uh, thanks to my family for sparing me to give time to my friends and uh, to do a little of teaching my both the sons are in canada right now They're in toronto any questions we have gone through question session and thanks thanks for your time my friends